How you doing, Emmy? No, can you hear me? You must be able to hear me now. You want to hear me chew? You want to hear the crunch? The iconoclasm then um, is seen um, as, a, as an act of um, prophetic violence that has just as much importance in Islamic tradition as uh, Moses's breaking of the tablets when he saw the idolatry at Mount Sinai, or Jesus's um, casting the money sellers out of the temple. The destruction of the idols was a new beginning a breaking from the past and the creation of a powerful new force. Mecca was just the beginning. One after another, the tribes of a nation were summoned to the fold and united under the banner of Islam. A worldwide community of faith was begun, born in an extraordinary alignment of history, personality and conviction. What Muhammad did was to bring a sense of solidarity, a sense of mission, and he united all these separate segments within the peninsula, from then on moved eastward, westward, northward, southward. The Muslims turned to the north, swept into present-day Lebanon and Syria. They continued west into Egypt and quickly across North Africa, fortifying the coastline of the Mediterranean. Only the seas stopped them. Its growth was so explosive uh, from uh, 622, the year one of the Islamic calendar. Um, within 50 years, people whose father had had been camel herders, were now governing one of the major empires in world history. Within 200 years, it extended from Spain to China. The Muslims have absorbed the Sasanian Empire of Iran and two thirds of the Christian Byzantine Empire. By now, the empire was larger than Rome. It stretched from Morocco in the west to the Indus River in the east, where the border of India is today. How had it happened that so small an army could conquer an area so large 
so fast, so easily. The Psalms' success in expanding into the Central Middle East and in, across North Africa was due in, in large part because people were fed up with previous regimes. So the idea that Muslims were going across the world saying convert or die is, is really not accurate, not at all. But it didn't have a heavy hand. They didn't rule with the heavy hand. They, they allowed the, the conquered peoples to maintain their, their administrative uh, structures. They allowed the Christians and the Jews to maintain their religious law and to be governed by them. And so in many cases, uh, the conquered peoples did not feel the presence of the, the new regime very heavily. Certainly for individuals who felt themselves uh, exploited or downtrodden by an oppressive and even sometimes parasitic priesthood, the idea of Islam being a religion essentially free from clergy must have seemed very attractive. It's the times that creates the movement and sometimes the men. The Roman we'll we'll finish this off. It's only got eight minutes, part the one. The Byzantine Empire wasn't strong enough. There was a need for a new, <coughs> way, a new uh, way of looking into life. And I think what happened at that time, Mohammed's mission filled the void that uh, the societies wanted. They really wanted some sort of solidarity in their lives. The lessons of the Quran, so successful for the Muslims in Medina and Mecca, were playing out on a global scale. As the conquest swept through Syria, the Muslims held their Friday prayers in the Church of St. John the Baptist in Damascus, allowing its Christian congregation to continue their services on Sunday. Side by side, the two faiths shared the same building in peace. As the Muslim community grew, they bought the old church from the Christian congregation and built a huge mosque on the site. With Byzantine artisans, they decorated it with golden mosaics of an Islamic paradise. The great mosque of Damascus would become a model for new mosques to come all across the empire. The Arabs transformed their conquered lands maintaining, improving, or expanding the infrastructure. In Tunisia, building on Roman ruins, they devised an ingenious system of water purification, using gravity to separate fresh water from sediments. Part of this system were these two enormous basins that they built outside the city walls the clean, fresh water would flow over the, into the larger basin, where it would then be distributed by pipes to the city. Um, this is, you know, hundreds of years before anyone in Europe ever thought of having running water. All over you find schemes for bringing water from the mountains where there was more water to the plains where there might be less water. They resurrected elaborate irrigation systems filling the old stone aqueducts with precious water. Agriculture flourished as life-giving staples like wheat were introduced to the Mediterranean region. <clears throat> but Muslims saved their most monumental feat for the holy city of Jerusalem. Islam's first great work of art is the Dome of the Rock. It was built in a city that was holy to Christians and Jews. 
and it's spectacular. Like Mecca and the Kaaba, the significance of this holy site goes back to Abraham. For the rock within is said to be the place he nearly sacrificed his son. It was built to rival the nearby church of the Holy Sepulchre, where Jesus was said to have been buried. What's extraordinary about the Dome of the Rock is how perfect it is. People revered this site as some place that was holy to Abraham and to Isaac. Imagine, if you will, these new guys coming in and taking over this piece of prime real estate and building a new building for a new religion that sits on top of a mountain and sparkles and glitters in the sunlight for everyone to see. This is not something that a fly by night. This is something big and important. Tomorrow is Wednesday, um, Amber. Islam has come to stay. <clears throat> in just a hundred years, Mohammed's vision had transformed the spiritual and political map of the world, and his followers had established an empire larger than Rome. But Mohammed never lived to see it. In the 11th year of the Islamic calendar, 632 AD, only two years after the taking of Mecca, Mohammed died. Medina fell into despair. For days, the city was consumed with sorrow and ceremony. He's known to have said that he wanted to be buried very simply, with no marker over his grave. He didn't want people to worship his grave. That would interfere with their worship of God. God had spoken to them only through Muhammad. Now that the prophet had left them, Perhaps God would as well. Muhammad's death set up a crisis in the young Islamic community. The question of succession was the first thing that really occupied people's concerns. At this point, there was a divergence of opinion as to how the community should go about choosing a new leader. According to the Shiites, the faction, the Shia of Ali, Muhammad had indeed designated Ali, his son-in-law and cousin, as his successor. The opinion that came to be the majority opinion, or the Sunni opinion, held that Muhammad had not appointed a successor during his life, but had said, after I am gone, choose one from among your peers, from among the elders. And from the house there came out the man who would be his successor, Abu Bakr. And he addressed the people and said, if you worship Muhammad, know that he is dead. If you worship God, know that he lives forever. Here was the secret to Islam's strength and profound influence. The unifying power of one God, merciful and compassionate, the power of one people, bound by a common faith. Muhammad did not lead the conquest or create the empire to come the transforming power of his message did. Out of that message would spring a font of knowledge that would transform humanity as Islam continued to spread its reach far and wide. Awaiting the Muslims would be a new age. They would be destined for enlightenment, for new horizons, and a clash of great powers, the like of which the world had never seen. Oops. That's um, part one finished. Alhamdulillah. And it is amazing, actually. It was like what it was saying was that. Um, Muhammad Sassam had nothing to do with the spread of Islam after that. It was Islam that spread. Do you get me? The seeds have been planted with the Prophet Sassam and the Quran being revealed. But it was the power of the Quran 
um, and the example of the Prophet Sam that enabled Islam to spread, mashallah, as it did. And not just spread, spread and permeate and um, establish strongholds, alhamdulillah. That was, that was really good, alhamdulillah. Um, Salam alaikum, everybody. Um, Rose Darin, uh, how are you doing? I saw your donation, I think, mashallah. Jazakallah khairan for your support for the uh, project. It's really appreciative. And whatever you supported it with, alhamdulillah, again, really appreciative. All right, we're on the final, um, we're on the final push. Final push. Um, we're going to give it a go. Um, let's see what we can do. How much have we got to go? I think we're less than a thousand pounds on it. Let's see how, how well we can do now. Inshallah. Um, one second, bear me a second. One second, give me a second. Right, one second. Right, I think that's the one. Yep. 970 to go. Fantastic. Let's get this knocked out. Let's get this knocked out. 970 pounds to go, mashallah, to hit the 30,000 pound target, which we, um, we've we been pushing on, pushing on, pushing on. This is the last day of Ramadan. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us one more day. Let's just hit that target. I'll be so happy. The reason why I'd be so happy was, like I say, my original intended target. What, what, the, what the brothers at the Majid said, look, they said, Hamza, you did, you did 20 grand uh, last year. Um, can you do 30 this year, like maybe a thousand pounds each day of Ramadan? And I was like, oh, it's a lot to ask. This at the other, I've got fundraiser at the moment for my editing, and I've got a fundraiser for this brother Carter. So it's like, um, I'm gonna struggle to, to ask them again for more money. Uh, for they goes, oh, but okay, then do what you can. I said, I think 20,000 again, I think 20,000 again would be worthwhile. I think we could do that. And we started on the 27th night, imagine. The 27th night of, well, just before it, we was on £2,700, weren't we? We started seriously on the 27th night of Ramadan. And in three days, four days, we reached 29,000. Well, we reached the 20,000 within nearly a day. And then it was like, okay, so I pushed it on to 25,000. And now, mashallah, we're right. We can, we can see the horizon of 30,000, which was the original... Um, was the original request if I could do that? And so imagine how much we could have raised if we'd have started at the beginning of Ramadan. Subhanallah, we could have. Oh wow. Anyway, it is where it is. So here we are, mashallah. We're on twenty nine thousand and thirty, just nine hundred and seventy to go. Let's do this. Let's do this. No, I saw Rose's question. Okay, Rose. Um, so you want to learn more about Islam? Have you registered with the uh, New Muslim Foundation in um, newmuslimfoundation.org? 970 squids left to complete a quarter of the needed money. Well, not just that. No, we raised, um, besides my 20 on the night of Ramadan and night of Laytul Qadr, we raised uh, 65, uh, no, including mine, we raised 85,000. So now we've raised 95,000. Once we've reached the 30,000, we've reached 95,000, mashallah. We're only, um, I think it was 150,000 for a project. 55 short, but the good thing is now, um, this is, um, one second. This can start phase one and phase two and such. So, mashallah, let's see. Let's see what we can do here on the live. And then hopefully, um, let's see what we can pick up during the day. I'll have to do one more uh, request on Twitter and that. 
Um, I reckon we can do it. I've got confidence in you. And um, it's time for Groundhog Day. Assalamu alaikum, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, just to introduce you, this is the Mount Foundation. This is the mountain where it all began. If you'd have come here 10 years ago, it would be a completely different site you'd be seeing. Then we have a house here, and we had a shed here. But well, mashallah, 10 years ago, we started the project, demolished everything, created three floors now, mashallah. Now, as you can see, the outer, the outer building has been completed. And um, mashallah, you contributed 15,000 pounds last year, mashallah, to this, alhamdulillah. Um, this year we're raising for the wooden area, inshallah. I think it's a hundred thousand pound project. Hamza's Den is trying to raise twenty thousand pounds towards that project, inshallah. This is currently the wooden area. Oh, it's horrible. Oh. Anyway, this is the wooden area as it stands right now. This is what the two men's floors are using for wudu. Subhanallah. May Allah reward them. <laughs> anyway, so this year, inshallah, we're, we're trying to raise £20,000. I did say 10000 but I'm thinking, no, let's raise 20000 27th night, Ramadan, we're going to make the pledge, inshallah. So this, this is the masjid, alhamdulillah. So it's your support we need for the wudu area. And remember, mashallah, that there's three floors, there's this floor, we have a ground floor, and we have the upstairs. Upstairs is going to be dedicated to sisters alone, mashallah. So they have a place to pray their Jummah, place to pr they've been praying Tarawih there every night, mashallah. They're going to have community op opportunities for children, mothers and toddlers, all these things. They're going to have their own facility, mashallah. And then we have the two floors for the men. Now remember, the madras is here and all of these things. So whatever you donate, mashallah, for the wudu area, for this masjid, my center, alhamdulillah, every time someone makes wudu, Alhamdulillah, you'll get the reward from it. Alhamdulillah, because they'll make their salah after that, inshallah. And remember, if it's not for you, if you've got enough hasana and you don't need any more, no problem. If you have any, any of your loved ones that's passed away, mashallah, you could dedicate that your donation to them. So inshallah, when they're in their qabr, when they're in their graves and their hasana starts falling and they're asking, where is this from? They'll say, this is from your son or this is from your daughter, mashallah, who've uh, donated to this wudu area, mashallah. And you're now um, bearing the blessings of it, alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we're trying to raise 20 grand. Inshallah, we've raised two and a half so far. Um, let's raise the rest, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is what we're raising the funds for. And then if I show you where I made the pledge. Now, the way we did it, the pledge was um, I pledged 5,000. Um, initially, uh, one second, and then I kept matching other people in the hall to say if, if someone donates five, I'll match it, kind of thing. And then we raised it, we got up to uh 20. But I'll show you the center. This was, this was me making the pledge, inshallah. Okay, I just wanted to say a few words before uh, the pledge begins, inshallah. Um, some of you may recognize me, you know, they know me from the budget, the city, I know some kids have become to music saying that they know me since the last time. Other people went up to my YouTube channel, happy to say. Anyway, mashallah, uh, this is my center. And the journey began for me at the particular center in 2004 when I went to the front of Ibrahim, Kuwait, where we tried to raise the money towards the deposit to buy the land. At that time, it was a potato shed and it was a house. And I had the number of funds there, we came back and we had a dream. We had a dream to go to the centre, there would be three floors, 
10 gigs of global systems, and two floors for the brothers, mashallah, a place where we place the community, a place where we have obviously the brasas, a place of da'wah, the internet, a fully functioning sense. So we had this dream in 2004, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, the, the dream has been fantastic. I will, you know, we've, um, we prayed in house, we prayed in the sheds, we've done all sorts, alhamdulillah. Um, now, we're here to do the pledges today, inshallah. Now, what do you have to understand about these pledges? And what they're for? That they're for you. They're investments for you. And there's two investments that we're talking about here. There's the major investment, and that's with Allah. That you know, whatever you give in the sake, for the sake of Allah, it's a beautiful loan for Allah. And Allah is going to repay that loan to you, inshallah. And it's not going to be whatever you donated today, inshallah. This is the major reward, alhamdulillah. But the more tangible reward, which is, you can see, is that this is your center. This is where you pray. This is where your children are going to learn Quran and memorize Quran. This is where your sisters and your mothers and your daughters, mashallah, are going to place the come. This is your community. This center has not been built by millions coming from the Arab world. It's been built on the wages of taxi drivers, chicken shop workers, whoever, the local businessmen. This is your center. And you're investing your center. You're going to use this center. This brother's queuing up right down the road. SubhanAllah. So this is what you're investing in. So when the pledge is starting, inshallah, bear that in mind. Okay, inshallah? I just want to start it from the pledge from my side. Alhamdulillah. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, so today's pledge is for the Wudu area. Alhamdulillah. This is going to be three floors, mashallah, a Wudu on each floor, inshallah. And this is what you're donating for. Now imagine every time someone makes Wudu there, mashallah, you're getting the Hasanah from that, inshallah. This is what your money's going towards. And if you're in a situation where, I don't think any of us, you don't need the Hasanah, subhanallah, this is something you can pledge on behalf of people who pass on. You can pledge for your fathers, your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, whoever, to not have an opportunity to pledge. You pledge on their behalf, subhanAllah, they'll be gaining the reward of Sadiq Majali and Muhammad for what you do, inshallah. So, this is something else to bear in mind, inshallah. Okay, so from my side, inshallah, I'm going to start the pledges off uh, with 5,000 pounds donation from my channel, Hamza's then, inshallah. And inshallah, I hope you guys join in. JazakAllah, Brendan. Alhamdulillah. Um, I love to hear the sound of my own voice. Thank you, uh, Muslim Brooklyn. No, I'm basically showing where I made the pledge uh, for the center and reminding people what the uh, pledge was about. But thank you very much for your observation. Alhamdulillah. So £905 to go, inshallah. I'm sure we can do this. I'm sure we can do this. I don't know. Oh, can we do it here? I got, I got confidence in you guys. MashaAllah. So we're on £29,005. I tried to join, but it says I can't because I'm a born Muslim. Oh, does it say that? Oh, SubhanAllah. Um, okay. So. Oh. Okay, so. Where would a sister who's coming back are you what you're coming back to the dean or what what's the script with that i don't know your story rose sorry forgive me well though it's spelt wrong and also it should be sister's entrance with the apostrophe at the end of the sentence they need to be changed also i guess <laughs> yeah i would say so i was like uh Um, there's a place as well I know uh, called Al Huda, um, Al Huda, but I don't know the website or anything. So, well, it's a Muslim ninja. Why did you say in your last bit to the atheist Prophet Muhammad did not know did not know he was going to Jannah? Um, I, I was just showing his humbleness. I, I, didn't, don't believe I said he doesn't know where he's going. Mm. Oh yeah, you've got our boy um, 
Lighthouse Foundation, uh, Brother Yusuf Pondas. Yeah, yeah, he, um, mashallah, uh, they, they have that um, for the, the uh, you know, born Muslim with doubts and stuff. And Do I know Robert Spencer? Yeah, I've heard of Robert Spencer, yeah. Short little angry guy. I think he made famous the uh, no, that was Robert Mori, one of the Allah's a moon god. It is just a it's just yeah, just a, a basic Islamophone. You're a born Muslim brother. I always prayed, but I grew up in foster care, and my family are not fully religious, so I never learned Quran or history of Islam, unfortunately. Okay, mashallah. So as long as you've always prayed, that's fantastic. Um, there's so much facilities online as well these days. Um, or go to a like central mosque where there'll be facilities for sisters. Oh, mashallah, you, you get your prayers going though in the foster care. Wait a minute, I am a born Muslim. Uh, are you saying I'm a born Muslim? Brother, or are you saying I am a born Muslim brother? <laughs> I'm confused now. Keep, I keep. I'm, I'm pretty sure you. You sound like a sister. I, I refer to you as a sister now. <laughs> I am a born Muslim brother. No, I'm a born Muslim, comma brother. I'm assuming. Yeah, can't have a name like Rose. Be a geezer. Mashallah, Rose. Everyone's doing all right, Mr. Mohammed Adin. No, I was just reading it. I was like, Do you believe Israel has become secular? I don't know. I've never been there to, to uh, comment. So we're at 29,095. Yeah, you are a sister. I assume so. I was just reading it. I was, just, I was reading it. I don't know. It's early. Sorry. Alhamdulillah. But Lighthouse Foundation and Sapiens Institute are designed for the... They're mainly for uh, Muslims who are um, basically um, having doubts about the religion and such. But I'm pretty sure it would cover that as well as someone coming to the dean, or they could put it in the right direction. But I know this Al Huda, but I just don't know their. Um... One second. Because they used to come to our uh, message, they used to do classes there. MashaAllah, 900 to go. Let's do this. So we just need 90 people with a tenner. We've got 81 people here. You're right, T.K. She didn't say she was a brother, for God's sake. Please, shut up. <laughs> it was the way I read it. That was all. She said, I was born Muslim brother, meaning calling me brother. Nine hundred pound target now. Nine hundred pound target, uh, Amberine. Oh, shut up! It didn't post, brother. <sighs> it was the way I read it. You're, you're, you're like one of these Christians, man. You're like God logic. No logic. Rose says explicitly, I'm a sister. I'm a sister. Ready for risk next week, Yusuf? Back. Oh. Wa alaikum as -salam, essence of wisdom.
ready for more DayZ. Yeah, I, I've not been really... Pl- no one's been playing it recently because everyone's been like in Etikaf or whatever. So it's like, I think our base might be maybe raided. <laughs> I don't know. But hopefully we get back into it. Are you joining us, MA? You ready to join us? Yeah, I heard that Daisy's kind of like a mod of that armor. Uh, but anyway, alhamdulillah. 900 to go. Got all day to get it, hopefully. So hopefully we'll uh, pick it up. But um, yeah, mashallah, this, this man did go first. Um, yeah, Ro, you're unable to pay because I do not work and live alone, divorced woman. Alhamdulillah. So when I saw this live, yeah, there there, there is a facility out there. Start with Lighthouse uh, as well, and um, I may have shared New Muslim. Um, inshallah, and that, that will help you. Read as well. Read. Pick up books and read. Alhamdulillah. Work out what what is it you want to learn about. There's a there's a beautiful book called The Ideal Muslimah. A really nice book, mashallah. That would be well worth you reading. Gives you an idea of uh, how a Muslim woman should be, inshallah. Um, do you have uh, Do you have a business advice? I'm thinking of starting clothing selling business. Yeah, very simple. Um, source what you believe you're going to sell and find a place where they're interested in buying what you want to sell. <laughs> simple as that. Um People, a lot of people selling on TikTok and places like that now. So that's, um, that. yeah, yeah, don't sell scarves in uh, Ilford. Just like you don't build a base in Cherno, you don't sell scarves in Ilford. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a matter of knowing um, if there are people around who want to buy what you're interested in selling and make sure. So it's all about supply and, supply and demand. So where are you going to get the stuff from and who's going to buy it? Simple as that. But now with TikTok shops and all that kind of stuff, you can hit the world with um, products. So it's, it's a lot easier. And you'll you'll always find your niche. Masha Allah, 29, 120, 880 to go. Come on, guys. I really want to do it with us here. I don't want to leave it to the internet to uh, mop up all the, the hasanat. And I really want to... Um, I really don't want my Qatari guy to have anything to mop up, to be honest. <laughs> I really want to, um, I really want to um, mop it up ourselves. Alhamdulillah. And I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I'll, I'll keep this this live going till about six o'clock i'm gonna go pray fudger in about 15 minutes we'll go on till six o'clock um Qatari sugar daddy <laughs> Uh, alhamdulillah he um yeah he has supported me in the past um alhamdulillah and he said that he would um he he, he didn't like the idea of me uh, increasing it though um because he, he when we started with twenty thousand pound target he was said like he'll, he'll top it up um then um i increased it to 25 and then i increased it to 30 alhamdulillah so now i just want to show mashallah we can raise that dough uh without the need alhamdulillah
We don't get many. I think uh, no logic has attracted all the trolls anyway. They're all, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're all hanging on to his every word on his live stream, whatever he's doing. So don't worry. Yeah, I'm going to pray in 15 minutes, inshallah. Then I'll come back and then we can do another half an hour. Let's see if uh, let's see if Muslim Brooklyn has any more <laughs> digs. <laughs> oh, you bought a sister that book too, The Ideal Muslimah. Yeah, there's also The Ideal Muslim. There's two. There's Ideal Muslim and The Ideal Muslimah, inshallah. Um... Tell, tell you what I'll do, sister. Um, if you email me, inshallah, I'll um, I'll get that book to you. The idea, Muslima. Is it a gold book? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. I'll I'll, I'll show you if I can find it. One second. Um, I could send you a copy, inshallah. It's this one second. Just stop that. This one. Uh, this is my email, um, Rose Amber. Uh, let's put it there for you at ro ask Hamza's den at gmail.com. Inshallah. So I can get you that. And there's another one that's really cool. Um, this is just showing on e eBay. I'm not sure about it off eBay is this one don't be sad this is another very good one as well mashallah very popular Uh, Irina will be back uh, probably a week on. Uh, well, depends. I might be traveling. I might be traveling. Uh, what am I thinking of traveling? Yeah, next week I might be traveling. So we may not have an arena until. Oof. Oh, mashallah, 29.185 now. We're on our way. Am I still going to speak at school on Sunday? Uh, yeah, I am. But then I was also thinking, <laughs> I was also thinking of traveling on Monday. I haven't decided when I'm going to travel yet. I think I might, because I have to go, I have to go to Turkey first, and then I have to go to Qatar. So it's like... Um, if I travel, I won't be going to Speaker's Corner. If I don't travel, I will. <gasps> Eight fifteen to go. Alhamdulillah. I think we'll hit the 30,000. Yeah, I just got to dip dip into Turkey. Just to uh, sort some... Uh, no, 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 no. Just to sort out um, some of my scarf wholesalers and all, order a few bits and pieces. Then I'll go on to Qatar. Um, I have to sort something out there. Also, I would like to ask about mental health as well. I... Because unfortunately, I really suffer from it and I have no one around me. I asked help from the Muslim community, but no one helped. 
Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, um, Rose. Uh, mental health is my uh, Achilles heel. I can't handle mental health. I really can't. My, my, my brain can't compute it. I can't. But Lighthouse Foundation, I'm pretty sure, can help with something like that. But um, will I go to the UAE and Saudi? Uh, I don't know. I've messed up, to be honest with you, because, mashallah, there was um, a Kuwaiti brother, mashallah, from the IPC who had invited me to come to Kuwait. It was going to be like an official invitation and such. And um, I didn't save his contact kind of thing. It was just like on WhatsApp just replying. Then he gave me the name of his manager, which was WhatsApp and replying without really saving names. I was just seeing their photos. And then I got a new phone and wiped everything. So I've got no access now to um, Kuwait. So sad, subhanAllah. It was such a, such a promising um, endeavor that was going to be. And now I've got no links at all. So now I've just got to hope that they get back in touch with me. So that was what I was planning to do was go to Kuwait um, and then go to Qatar. Um, but now I lost that bloody opportunity. I'm so I'm so gutted. But anyway, um, I'm going to, um, but I have to go to Qatar anyway. But I might just make it like a three, four day trip rather than anything longer. But I'm, I have been known to extend. So we'll, we'll see. You may Keegan wants to jump on and ask a question. Okay, yeah, well, I'll put the link out. Um, let Keegan jump on, ask the question. Uh, Qatar don't deal in oil, they deal in gas, mate. I mean, Mr. Whale. Okay, so is this Keegan? I don't know. Or is this someone else? Um, I don't know. Oh, so, uh, oh Keegan's here. Um, let me just see what Keegan wants and then um, we'll go to Mr. Whale. Keegan looks like he's up for a fight though. I don't know what he's doing. He's brushing his hair and everything. Yes, Keegan. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, hey. I just had one question uh, and it was kind of about the Bible being corrupt. Uh, how is it that the Bible came to be corrupt? How would you say? How? Um... <laughs> What do you mean by corrupt? Well, uh, that's the very common argument that Muslims make that they won't read the Bible is because it's corrupt and it's not the true word of God anymore. So I'm wondering <clears throat> what arguments do Muslims make to prove that? Okay. Um, can, can, can I give you some advice? When, sure. when you, when, why don't you ask my opinion first about what I think about the Bible? Okay. And, th and, and then... And then then you can uh, respond as to, like, you, for example, you could say to me, um, do you believe the Bible is corrupt, Hamza? For example, and mm -hmm. I'll say, you, I, I could say to you, yes or no. And then you can uh, ask me, why do you believe it's been corrupted, or how it's been corrupted, or when it was corrupted, or whatever, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Do, you get, do you get me? So yeah. Yeah. May, maybe start, maybe just deep breath, start okay. again. And in your opinion, right? what do you think of the Bible and why do you think it is corrupt? You've just done it again. Well, it's a question, Hamza. When, when did I say it was corrupt? That's the Muslim argument that people make that it's, okay. that's why they don't follow the Bible. Okay. So again, start again, ascertain my position first. You're going to ask me a question about it. I brother, I did. And you well, said that you did it again. You told me to ask your opinion on the Bible. I did. No, no, you, you didn't. Me, I said to you, ask me, Hamza, do you believe that? I mean, I can't, I can't make your argument for you, man. You, I'm not making, you, you're not making it. Right, let me, let me rephrase, let me, okay, let's do it this way. 
Do you believe the Bible's been corrupted? No. You don't. How do you understand the term corruption? Corruption is it cannot be fully understood for what it is. That's not what corruption means. Okay. Maybe, maybe this is your confusion. Uh, this is a problem that you don't understand the words you're using. Corruption means change from the original. Uh, uh, that's true. Uh, that's okay. true for, for every... That's true for the Quran too, though. No, the Quran's got nothing to do with why I'm asking you the question as to why you believe the Bible's not been okay. corrupted. Okay. Okay. So when I ask you a question about do you believe the Bible's been corrupted, the Quran isn't going to help you. And my beliefs are it not going to help. It actually will. It, it won't. I'll tell you why it won't. Because I can give you the verses where the Prophet uh, Muhammad in I'll, I'll, I'll say it against something you. AD. I'll say it again to you. <laughs> I'll say it again to you. If I'm asking a question about what you believe about the Bible, okay. my my beliefs, the Quran, what the Prophet Muhammad, peace and him, said, will have no bearing on as to why you believe or what you believe about your Bible. Okay. So I'll ask you again. Do you believe that your Bible that you read today in your hand has been corrupted or not? No. And because we have uh, corrupted is not the word. It is the the copies that we have from the past, uh, such as 300 AD and, uh, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, which for, from the first century and the Apocrypha. Um, those are considered fragmentary. They're not full, but that doesn't mean corruption. It's not the same thing. All right. Keegan, Keegan, you're embarrassing yourself, dude. How am I embarrassing uh, myself? Uh, oh, OK. Because your oldest manuscript, fourth century, Codex Sinaiticus, is complete. It's not fragmentary. Okay. It's not fragmentary. Your P62 okay. from the second century is fragmentary, c credit card size, bits of manuscript. But okay. from the four, from the fourth century of Codex, Satica, uh, Codex Sinaiticus, which is uh, complete New Testament, and then you have fifth century Codex Vaticanus, which is fifth century um, complete manuscripts. All right. So the question today, you, I would ask you to know if it's been corrupted. This is how you would know if it's been corrupted. Does your Bible, has your Bible today changed from what the earliest manuscripts say? Yeah. What does the Prophet Muhammad say in 600 but Nothing AD? to do. Nothing yes, to do. it does. Because it doesn't you help you. Your, no, 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 no. Do, no, no. It's, 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 okay. Gone, understand right? something. Then, Keegan, Keegan, Keegan. Understand. This is not about me. This is about you. Okay. So what I believe is irrelevant to us to why you believe what you believe. So, again, I'll, I'll say it to you. Has the Bible that you read that you read today been changed from the earliest manuscripts? No, because we have okay, manuscripts cool. from 300 cool. AD. Uh, which, right? which which Bible do you read? Uh, I'm not really secular, but I read all 88 books of the Bible, or try to read all 88 so which, books of the Bible. Uh, which Bible do you read? The Ethiopian, uh, how many Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, sir? You have an Ethiopian Bible in your house? No, I read it online. Okay, let me rephrase my question again. Which Bible do you have in your house? I don't have a Bible in my house. It's all online. You don't have a Bible? No, sir. Why not? Because you read it online. That's how you get the best information. Okay, then. You get the and best information online? Okay. I'm trying. Uh, all right, all right. If you want to ask my personal journey, Keegan, yes. Keegan, Keegan, do you believe the Bible is the Word of God? Yes. Can the word of God be changed? No, says your prophet can, Muhammad. Can the word of God be added to? No, says your prophet Muhammad. Can it be removed from? Uh, I guess remove, if, it's, if, can, it's, can, if it's fragmentary, technically, yes. No, 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 fragmentary, complete, right. So if I can demonstrate to you right now that your Bible contains verses that are not found in your original manuscripts, will you concede that it's been corrupted? No, because Hamza, you, you're not listening uh, to me. You're not listening to me, right? In 600 something AD, your prophet confirmed all of the Bibles, right? When did he confirm the New Testament? When did he confirm? When did he confirm this? Do you want the verses? Yes. Okay, sure. Let's see. It was. He's laughing. He's laughing. He got cooked in the park. Uh, Surah five forty four. <laughs> uh, Surah two eighty seven. Show me where the Quran five, mentions. Four. Show me where the Quran mentions the Bible. Yeah, please do that. Which surah? All right, Surah five forty four. Lo, okay. we did reveal the Torah, where is guidance and delight? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a minute. Follow the steps. Gospel. Okay. 
and we caused Jesus, Son of Mary, to follow in the fir- their footsteps, confirming which was revealed to them before in the Torah, and we bestowed them on the gospel, wherein his guidance and a light, confirming that was which revealed before in the Torah. A guidance okay. minute. Okay, okay, there's more. It is Surah 33, Surah 1094, 95, Surah 1643, and then I already said Surah 33. Um, I don't know what you did. Okay, right. I don't know. So, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what you think you're doing. I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna offer you some. You advice. just asked me for the verses. I'm, yeah, yeah, but those verses don't mention the Bible, mate. So they, here's a they, problem. They mention they mention the gospel in no. the Old Testament, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Do you believe that the gospels that you read today in the New Testament is the Injil? If your prophet Muhammad says in 600 AD that we still have the original copy of the Old and New Testament, no, right? No, 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 no. no. I'm See, asking you. I'm, 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 I'm asking no, no, no. you a simple Hamza, question. You're trying. You're trying Ke- to Ke- appeal. Keegan, 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 Keegan. Keegan. All right. Ha- ha- have a lovely day, sir. You, you can't okay. hold a conversation. You've got no you're attention span. You're the one trying span. to control the conversation. You, you, you've got the attention span of a kitten. I'm a, I was asking you mm. questions as to what you believe. Forget what I believe about your Bible. I'm asking what you believe about your Bible. I'm you may... asking you how. The no, Bible no, but the problem, the, pro- the problem right? is, you, no, the problem is, this is the problem, yeah. You've got no brain to think for yourself. Okay. I asked no, you a very I, simple I question. I asked you a very simple question. If your Bible today, I'm going to ask it for a last time, yeah. If your okay. Bible today contains verses which are not found in the original manuscripts, do you accept that those verses are a corruption of the verse of the text? No. I no. Mean, if, they're, I, if they're completely no. changed, then yes. But if they're no added, which no, is no. Different. Okay, okay. You said the Bible's a word of God, yes. Yes. You said it can't be changed, yes. Yes. If it's been changed, is it the word of God? Transliterated is not the same thing. No. If it's been changed, is it the word of God? If it's complete, been completely changed, then yes. No. If it's been added to, is it the word of God? If it's been removed from, is it the word of God? If it's been added to, it's the word of God. Removed from is technically... Is if it's technically been added to, it's the word of God? I said if it's not been added to, it's, or no, if, if it's, it's been, been added, added to, it's not the word of God. So if it has been added to? It's not the word of God, yes. Okay, fantastic. So I'll demonstrate to you now it's been added to, yeah? So you're... Whoa, whoa, whoa hang on. Okay. Well, let me ask this, right? When did this change come? Uh, forget the verse right now. When no, did the change forget come? when it what happened. Year? Okay, when, when did yeah. it happen? Ten, 10th century. 10th century. But we have copies before. We have copies before that came out. Hamza. That's the whole copies. point. That's the whole point. So before the 10th century, this particular verse wasn't in your Bible. After the 10th century, it was. Therefore, someone's added this verse into your Bible. Okay, so that specific Bible is is not. The complete word of God, but the ones before, which we still all right, have all right. So, do, oh, okay. So, which Bible do you read again? Doesn't matter which Bible I have to read. No, which one do you believe is the most reliable? It, it doesn't matter. I'm the... uh, see you, mate. See you, buddy. And and the, and the sad the sad thing the sad thing about all of that conversation, right? Is he actually thinks he did something? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's probably going away now, thinking he did something. And it's like, and 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 this is, <laughs> Kika jumps in line his neck with steak wrapped around his neck. But this is the point. This is the problem. Okay, it's not whether we believe the Bible's been corrupted or not. Okay, it's whether you Christians believe it has or not. It, it's not us saying it's been corrupted. It's New Testament scholars that are saying it's been corrupted. We're just reiterating what your scholars say. So it's not our opinion. So. If um, if if you want to ask a Muslim, do you believe the Bible has been corrupted? First thing is, my question would be to you is, well, do you believe it has? Because if you don't think it has, that tells me you don't understand what the word corruption means. And when I ask you what the word corruption means, you don't know what the word corruption means. And so once you don't know what the word corruption means, you've got a problem. It's like a diagnosis problem right there. You don't even know what you don't even know what question you're asking or answering. Do you know what I'm saying? But ah, oh, dear me. Anyway, let's quickly have Mr. Whale. Mr. Whale. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Salam, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good, good. I just want to tell you, uh, brother, you're a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I love you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, your previous guest, may Allah guide him to Islam. Subhanallah. I hope, 
He's, he's, he's in the chat now. Classic deflection happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, these people, man. It, it, yeah, I know, I know. It's it's sometimes, sometimes I, I, I see you debating other people and sometimes I'm like, it's not worth it. It's not. And and it's, yeah. But I, I just want to tell you, may, may Allah bless you and uh, bless your family. And accept Ameen, your, inshallah. And, and yours, yours also, my brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, I watch you all the time. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and, and keep doing what you're doing. Mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. Take alaykum. care. Wa alaikum assalam, my brother. Mashallah. Oh, that was nice. From one, from one, from one thing to another. Mashallah. Right, let's see. Have we moved on? Or are we still the same? No, we're still the same. Come on, guys. Um, if you want to speak to me, I'm going to put the link out again. I'm going to go pray my uh, fajr, and then if I want to come back, you should be backstage, inshallah. No disrespect, but that kid came on, didn't even know his question. <laughs> you, you know, you know, Muslims say, Muslims say, relax, relax. First of all, if you're dealing with someone, deal with their position on the situation. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go pray. Inshallah.
Okay, we're back in the room. Um, Rican Muslim, inshallah. Yes, my brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm just finishing my first Ramadan, and it's because of YouTubers like you that I was introduced to Islam. So, from Salisbury, North Carolina, and the Bible Belt here. And, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for everything you do. It matters, it helps. Um, <clears throat> you know, and inshallah, you know, I'm helping the little the local ma master down here. It's very small, so I'm helping them. <clears throat> get online and spreading the word of Islam, but you know, because of, yeah, it's because of people like you, you know, who decided to, you know, put some videos online and then, you know, so thank you so much um, for everything you do, you know, so it, it, you know, it does matter. It does help. And, you know, inshallah, more people will come to Islam because of a little bit of, you know, the things that you guys do. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. You got a nice set there. What are you, a gamer or something? No, no, I, I have a little YouTube channel. Um, and okay. I, I decided to change it all, you know, after I come, I reverted. Uh, okay. I was going into the whole red pill thing on there, and okay, I, you know, I've left all of that. Um, left um, this Ramadan, I stopped smoking. Mashallah. Completely. That's the only thing that I had to uh, let go of, and you know, say, so you know what, I'm going to, and I've stopped, and you know, and it's great, and I feel great. Um, I teach my daughters about, about you know, Islam, the Prophet. My oldest daughter, she she believes now that, you know, Alhamdulillah. She believes in Islam. She believes in the Prophet. Of course, me and my wife are separate. She doesn't believe in anything. She's, okay. <clears throat> but I know that in in turn, um, my daughter will. She in her time, you know, inshallah, she'll take her shahada and <clears throat> continue inshallah, on. And, inshallah, inshallah. How long have you been Muslim? Um, this will be this will be a year. Um, yeah, mashallah, yeah, mashallah. yeah, last year, uh, right, uh, the end of Ramadan, that's when I took when I actually um reverted, it was with Sheikh Umad, Uthman. Oh, okay, mashallah. yeah, and then um, you know, I was watching YouTube channel because I, I was trying to find you know, it's like why I have a lot of debates with my parents, and it was always like nothing makes sense, and but I never correlated Islam because I was in the military, you know, terrorists okay. and everything, but. I remember when I went to Iraq, hearing the the Adan, it was mm -hmm. the most beautiful I ever heard in my entire life. Oh, subhanAllah. Especially in, in Iraq, it's it's a different story. But I remember sitting there going, why do I feel at peace? Why do I love this so much? I'm supposed to hate them. And the Muslim people, they're, they're the kindest people you've ever had in your entire life. We were bombing them, killing them, and, you know, they will give you the shirt and, you know, the little bit they had. Um, I'm getting teared. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, subhanAllah. Well, yeah, subhanAllah. Because they'll give you their food, they, even though they don't have any, knowing that we're their oppressors. You know, and I, like, I, I couldn't, I, don't, I didn't understand. You know, so. SubhanAllah. And, and I carried that with me for 20 years. Because I was there at the beginning. Um, and then I was had this conflict. Uh, my parents, I'm like, I told my mom, I was like, you know what? If there's Holy Spirit, why is the Holy Spirit confused? It's either. They're, he's confused. There is no Holy Spirit. Well, there's only one denomination, and everybody else is going to hell. And I told yeah. her, choose. And she couldn't. And I'm like, so it's not God. So why are you talking about the Holy Spirit? And he just, oh, and Paul, that didn't make any sense. I'm like, why is Paul against Jesus? And why is he calling? And I told her, I said, look, Paul is making himself into a prophet. If Jesus is God, then God gave me a revelation. And on the Bible itself, it says that whoever doesn't follow my gospel. And my mom, he's calling himself a prophet. Who the hell is he? He's your prophet. He is your prophet. He's not Peter, the Peter who's given the keys. You're not even following Peter. Who, where is Peter? Nobody knows where he is. And I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. And it just, they could never answer. They stopped debating me. They do not debate me at all. They can't. <laughs> They can, so yeah. it's but the, but the key, the key to when you, especially your parents, you're talking to them about that, don't um tell them where they're wrong, okay? Get them to realize actually what, what is it I'm believing. So rather than telling them that, 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 that mm -hmm. say to them, why, why do you believe that the, the Bible is a reliable source of information? Just, just get them to yeah. question things themselves.
you know i always say this about the um the holy spirit for example um it, it seems to be like some kind of scam <laughs> because whenever there's something you don't understand or why someone has some kind of authority they're always given this always oh, the holy spirit so mm -hmm. the church fathers the holy spirit the gospel writers the holy spirit everything's the holy spirit but then you're threatened with do not blaspheme the holy spirit so <laughs> you so you you you've given the explanation the holy spirit the holy spirit holy spirit but don't question it yeah don't question the holy spirit you could question everything else <laughs> You can question the deity of Christ or whatever you want to do. Just don't question the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's the scam. Because once you believe in this idea of this Holy Spirit, then people can get away with what they like and just, yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah, we were inspired by the Holy Spirit. They tell us yeah. what books to put in the Bible. They told us what books to reject to the Bible. Yeah. So it's like. So I say this, either the Holy Spirit's not doing its job, it just doesn't exist. And for me, yeah, it just doesn't exist. It's that's just, what I, I said. It's like, or I said, it's got to be confused. I'm like, the, the, the Holy Spirit is confused. I was like, or that's what I keep talking about. Parents, it's like, you got all these pastors now embracing the alphabets. And I'm like, is, it, is the Holy Spirit confused again? Or did it? I'm like, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I keep saying. I'm like, it, not, none of it makes any sense. And I'm telling you, and I even tell you the fruits. I'm like, what are the fruits of Christianity? I'm like, it says so in the Bible, you find it by the, 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 the fruits. And I'm like, all right, well, give me the fruits. Show me the fruits. And it's uh, it's not pretty. The fruits are not pretty. And so I just, it, it just, and then it was one day, um, to say, I, I, I divorced my ex, you know, did her thing, whatever on there, you know. So I remember just putting my forehead to the ground. Because I, I used to tell my parents, you know what? I might as well become a Muslim. Because <laughs> they're the only people that still believe. I used to tell my, my, my parents, I'm like, I might as well become a Muslim because apparently they're the only ones that, that you know, they don't change. And, and I remember putting my forehead to the ground and, and it's just tired. I was like, you know, God, if you're out there, you know, don't forget me. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And from there on, it was just, it was a journey. And I haven't, I haven't looked back since. Um, and yeah, it's... it's so what's your YouTube there. channel? Let's give you a bit of a plug. What's your oh, YouTube channel? Uh, it's just the Rican, Rican Muslim. The Rican Muslim. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, you can't see it because I've got uh, my uh, thing over. And then, um, and I pray at work. Um, I work at a gas station, so I, I, I pray when it's time to pray. I just pray, and you'd be surprised how many closeted Muslims there are on here. They see me, they, they stop me, and they're like, "Yo, man, you're you're out there praying." I'm like, it, "It's time for pray." And they're like, uh -huh. "I'll tell them like," and I'm like, "No, man, that's man. I can't believe you did that." I'm like, "Are you Muslim?" Mashallah. It's like, yeah. I'm like, what do you think you're supposed to do? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I'm like, no, man. And the people, that, and then I had there's a young lady who's like, I didn't think about, I was thinking about taking the shahada, and after I saw tell you praying, I'm gonna do it. She just came up oh. and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go take my shahada, and she did. She's a Muslim. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Because they just see me praying, and people, they know me now. The homeless people are out there. They see me praying. I've been people, somebody who's, you know, he's. He's struggling. There's a brother who's struggling. Who, you know, all of them, they, they go to jail. They take the shahada, they come out. But they see me out there praying, and then they approach me, and I'm like, I'm like, Allah still loves you. You know that, right? You know. We have, a, we have a small masjid. It's on Fridays. I mean, it's very small, but you're welcome. We're not going to turn you away. And I keep saying the same message over, over again. It's like, it's right across this, you know, nearby, and they know me for that. They're just like, oh, hey, there goes one of your Muslim brothers, and I'm like, and I'm still praying for him. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Rican Muslim, so brothers and sisters, please <laughs> jump on Rican Muslims and give, give them a follow, inshallah. Subscribe, inshallah. Yeah, um, but it's all because of you, Hamza, and other people like you. And just keep doing it. It does, um, like, you know, I don't think you understand like how far reaching you, you, you're going. Um, I said Salisbury, North Carolina, a little, uh, little town on there, a little hick town. But, you know, the, the Muslim com uh, community is growing here. Uh, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> And it, I've seen our smaller mess, you know, on Fridays getting cramped because we have like 30, 40 men, you know, praying, different culture, different backgrounds on there. Mashallah. Women there. So, yeah, and a little bit, a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? When I was there, there are only like five. <laughs> and this one year, it's, it's, it's growing. Allah Akbar. <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's growing even on the Bible Belt. So, dua, a lot of dua, um, our brothers. Other, I mean, inshallah. And, and I still pray for all those clustered Muslims. Don't be afraid, man. Just pray. You know, Allah will protect you. And if he doesn't, hey, you know what? Allah will give you the strength to fight anybody off. 
you know so alhamdulillah so, okay, okay what's your name my brother uh, my name's alex but um my brother uh, alex alexis but let's go i'm from puerto, I'm puerto rican and okay. i get my name because it means a protector of one's beliefs allah <laughs> allah akbar beautiful name alexis yeah. okay my brother i'll let you go and yes. jazakallah khair for jumping on sharing that story with us salam yes, alaykum MashaAllah, that was lovely. That was lovely. It's amazing how many people you don't realize you're affecting. Yusuf. Yes. Yusuf. Hello. 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 Um, so I was talking to one of my um, Christian brothers, and he was uh, asking me a question. Uh, I didn't know how to answer it, so I thought I would come and ask it over here. And what was his question? So he asked, he was like, how do we confirm the Qur'an? How do we confirm that uh, Malik Jibreel on the mountain of An-Nur surely did give the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, the word of Allah and not something else? And he was basically saying how this is why basically he believes in the Bible because it's more credible and there were more witnesses uh, over that back then. And you allowed him to get away with that? No, I, I, I actually didn't know how to answer the question. So no, you allowed him to get away with telling you that the Bible's more credible. No, obviously I didn't. But well, you kind of did. You kind of said you, you allowed him to ask uh, the question about the credibility of the Quran, and then he then said that he, that's this is why he's a Christian because he believes the Bible's more credible because of the witnesses all right so the problem he has with this question it can be asked back to him yeah and mm -hmm. it will expose his double standards so for example i wouldn't do it immediately but if he says he wants to know about muhammad peace and respond and we can say to him okay the reason we believe that the prophet muhammad received revelation from god is that the claim he made about the angel visit him in the cave can be tested as to whether it's veracity to it's the, whether it's true or not yeah so if he's not telling the truth then he must be lying and if he's not lying then he must be crazy and if he's not crazy then he must be deceived by satan yeah these are these are the alternatives to telling the truth would you yeah. agree yeah okay so and then all you do is demonstrate to him how the prophet wasn't lying and you demonstrate to him how he couldn't be deceived by satan and you demonstrate to him how he couldn't be mentally ill therefore oh, he must be that. telling the truth well, I've got two, there's two live streams at the moment on my channel. One's called What's the Prophet Hassan Crazy? And the other one's called What's the Prophet Hassan Lying? If I were you, I would watch them to get okay. the information. There's going to be a third one coming soon, which will be Was the Prophet Hassan Deceived by Satan? Yeah, I might try and get Yemeni to do that this Friday. And so there's your three alternatives. Okay. So you can give me your response as to why you believe, why you believe the Prophet Hassan was telling the truth and an angel visited him and told him this. But the question to ask the Christian is, how does he know Paul saw Jesus? What's the, evidence? What's the evidence for Paul seeing Jesus? Hmm. What's the evidence? And who's the authors of the Gospels? Who are they? Are they, are they eyewitnesses? Or are they second-hand information? Is it hearsay? Is it gossip? Or is it truly eyewitness uh, testimony? But like my question was, there's no direct way of like answering that. You just kind of have to ask the question back. No, not at all. I'll just give you the answer. What are you know about? I told you respond to the uh, there is respond we test the claim with the prophet muhammad so even as a muslim you should have you should know why you believe it the prophet so was telling the truth why he was a messenger of god and so you have to look at the alternatives if he wasn't a messenger of god what was he was he mm -hmm. a deceiver was he was he was he a liar w was he crazy guy w was he someone that satan manipulated you right. have to look at the alternatives and when you dismiss those are you sure you're not the christian you are a muslim isn't it? yes yes muslim alhamdulillah <laughs> you are the muslim okay um so so no don't you don't need to do what about it initially so you respond to the question so well, look, here's why we believe the prophet was a messenger of god and you give your response then you say how do you know paul saw jesus or why do you believe paul saw jesus and who are the authors of your gospels and why do you think it's eyewitness testimony because hmm. these are the questions you should really be asking right all right okay I'll do my own research, I'll watch those videos, and then I'll let you know. You, you, you don't need to do your own research. All you need to do is watch those videos, and you'll okay. know why. You'll know the arguments against the Prophet Sallallahu being a liar, and you know the arguments about against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being uh, crazy. And then you're only left with one, deceived by Satan, which is just a ridiculous notion. Right. Um, 
and then you're left with the truth, isn't it? Okay. All right. Take All care, right. dude. Thanks a lot. What's up? What's the man? What's happening, dude? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, it's time you can part the furniture here, man. What do you want? I have a question. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to do a red herring on you, but I watched a Muslim Lantern Muhammad Ali video. This was a, a Catholic. He, he had like a beard like you, and he was questioning about authenticity of Paul. And Muhammad Ali brought a point about miracles, doing miracles, and he claimed that Muhammad, I mean Paul didn't do miracles. But if you read some verses in the Bible, like Acts, uh, you could see, like according to that narrative, he did do miracles like he you know he healed the uh, dead he brought the dead back to life response would you give to christians who say look paul did do miracles actually okay <laughs> why did why do <laughs> when have you ever heard me use this argument paul didn't do no miracles. that's what i said i said no that's why i said i don't want to do a red herring on you that's the thing we, we, i'm saying and then, and then you did one I didn't say you said it. I said if and, a and it's not, it's not... <clears throat> Okay, but that's not a criteria for me because there are people who do all sorts of things. There's, there is supernatural things that do exist. There are jinns that exist in this world that can do whatever. Yeah. So it's like it's not like we're atheists and we don't believe in any of the supernatural beings. There are there are other things that can be explained phenomena that seem to defy the the natural world. Um, it doesn't have to be God. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, I've never so, heard this argument in my life. Paul wasn't a prophet. Paul, was it Paul? Wasn't, Paul raised the, according to the Bible, Paul, Paul raised the dead. Paul isn't reliable because he didn't do miracles. When has any Muslim said that? I think there's a delay. No, I, 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 I didn't say that. I promise that that's not what I'm saying. You did. I think there's a delay. Um, That's not what I, that, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not saying a miracle is a criteria. That's not what I'm saying. That's not so my question. Where did miracles my come from? My question. Oh, Christians are saying, oh, he was truthful because he did miracles. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Paul did the, the question I want you to debunk is Paul doing miracles. How do you know Paul did miracles? I don't believe he did miracles. Okay, well, how does a Christian know Paul did miracles? According to the Bible. Okay, so who cares what the Bible says? So you okay? You would have to refute the Bible, and then everything else within that would be refuted. No, is a Christian? <laughs> I'm trying to work out what you're asking me. I'm trying. Maybe there's a delay. Okay. There is a delay. There is a delay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are you asking me if a Christian comes to me mm -hmm. and and says uh, they believe Paul is um, who he claimed to be, representing Jesus on the earth? Because he did miracles. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So my next question, so a Christian came to me and asked me this. I said, why do people do miracles? And they'll say it's written in the Bible. I said, why do people the Bible says? Okay, fair enough. Fair but enough. I've never heard, and no Christian has ever, ever come to me and said, um, Paul's reliable because he did miracles. And I know Peter did miracles, but I didn't know Paul did miracles. What Paul, what miracle did Paul do? He raised the dead, according to Acts. Acts what? Then one second. Oh, I gotta pull it up. I know. I think it was Acts. Let me check. I don't think. I don't believe Paul raised Paul the dead. Paul doing miracles. Yes. I don't believe Paul. I don't believe I Paul raised the dead. I read a whole article about Paul doing wonders. Okay, yeah, there it is. So. Acts what? He, one second, healing the dead. I mean, that he did like a bunch, but healing the dead. One second. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I should have had it ready. Okay, so Peter. Sorry, I know Peter I, healed some uh, fishes or something, or raised some fish. One? Okay, what so was... he did. Okay, the God was. Axe okay. Axe what? This is not. The, I don't think this is a dead one. I think it's a different one. Let me find. No, it. which 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 one did Paul raise the dead? Tell me which one Paul raised the dead. I'm trying to look for it. It's a, it's a list. Um, so this is no. Where's the dead? Oh my god. They had a list. Ah. Uh -huh. Is it this one? I think, yeah. 18. Yeah, there it is. Okay, this is the list. Uh, where's the dead? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, Sorry. so I'm, re I'm reading it now. 
Eutychus fell asleep due to the long nature of the discourse Paul was giving. Fell from a window out of the three-story building and died. <laughs> Paul then embraced him, insisting that he was not dead, and carried him back upstairs alive. Acts 20, 29 to 12. Those gathered then had a meal and a long talk, which lasted until dawn. That's what you're referring to. Uh, is it Acts 20, verses 9 to 12? So just so you understand, the, so this is this is the miracle. So Paul's giving a lecture, was it? Paul's having a lecture or a debate or something. And the geezer who he's talking to falls asleep and falls out the window. right? And then the people think he's died. And then Paul goes down and goes, no, nah, no, nah, he's not dead picks him up, carries him back upstairs. And then they uh then they had a big then they had a meal and then they talked then they had a talk until dawn. That's the miracle. <laughs> Is he doing that seriously? Hmm. <laughs> okay, and now I see why it's laughable. He's talking to a guy. The guy goes, oh, Paul, you're so boring. Ah, falls out the window. <laughs> and the people say, boom. Oh, he's dead. And then Paul goes down and goes, no, oh, he's still breathing. Picks him up, carries him upstairs. And then and then they don't talk about that. They don't talk about this miracle. They they, they have they have food. And they, uh, they, they just talk until dawn. Mm. And Luke is telling this story. Come on, man. You, you allow a Christian to bully you with that nonsense? I, I, I couldn't find an answer. That's because the thing you couldn't find I'm, an answer. This is what I found interesting. I haven't met any Christians that talk about Paul doing miracles, and I think why. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm surprised. He's a fell asleep. I'm, surprised. I'm, I'm not surprised why they don't bring it up. Whereas Acts 20, let's, let, let's hear what the discourse was. Uh, Acts 27. <laughs> boring. <laughs> it's actually, Paul, you're boring me. Let me sleep. <laughs> oh, my Gideon. No wonder Christians never come to me and said, you know, Paul raised the dead. Paul lifted a guy up that everyone thought was dead, is what I would say. Um, if indeed that situation happened. Um, let me just. <laughs> Oh, whoa, Paul, you're so boring. One second. Acts, um, where is it? Acts 27. Here we go. On the first day of the week, we came to have to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down and threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking to him daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. If Paul raised him from the dead, Luke would have made a bigger deal than that. So, so he was basically alive, and then it just seemed. Like... Yeah, well, yeah. Paul, Paul said that people thought he was dead. I'm not. No, he's alive. Oh my god. Anyway, is that it, Uthman? Today, is that today's contribution? Well, we should have the Uthman segment. The <laughs> Uthman Muslim Ninja. I gotta start making content. I, what's, I put what's, content what's, he, what's he gonna YouTube. say? What's he gonna say today? What are you saying, bro? I, I should start putting content on YouTube. It's all on Instagram. My content. Okay, mashallah. Yeah, it's like short, short uh, refutations to absurd claims, basically. Like Islam really? is, a, Islam is an anti-Christ religion. It's like very absurd claims, and I just come and you know respond to them. Very, very absurd. Well, uh, what's it called but, on Instagram? Everyone's the Muslim ninja. The, the Muslim, Muslim ninja. ninja. Yeah. Okay, inshallah. My Allah keep it going from strength to strength. Yeah. Inshallah. So, thank you for having me on. You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome, my brother. Mashallah. Peter was healing fish, I think. I think Peter healed fish. Okay, mashallah. We're on 29, 290. So we just need 710 pound, and then we're done. Alhamdulillah. 
All right. I have to go soon. This is the last guest, uh, I'm afraid, because I've got work today, because the women are all going to be, oh, we got one more day of shopping. Okay. M&M. Hello. Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. You're right. Well, salam. All right. You're all right. Not too bad. Um, just want to say I've been watching your channel for a long time. Big fan. Enjoy what you do. I just have one question. So, like, on the online space, uh, why does it feel like the Christians, it's more like they're not trying to get people to join Christianity. They're just trying to, like, muddy the water in Islam. Like, trying to dissuade people. They just, like, it's not about like proving like Christianity is true. It's more like to show that Islam's false. Because, because I see. Yeah, because Islam is the threat to their worldview. Because Islam is the one that's questioning and poking holes in what they believe. So they try to discredit those that are trying to discredit them. Yeah, but wouldn't, isn't that big threat athe- atheism? Not really. Because Christians um, who leave Christianity still believe in God. It's just that the doctrines, so this is the whole point, you see, when I speak to a Christian, I'm not trying to make him an atheist. I'm just trying to return yeah. to uh, a, a, a position of um, agnosticism, if you like, but not agnosticism, whether God exists as what is the true religion. Do you get me? So yeah. an atheist has to try to convince a Christian God doesn't exist, which is pretty difficult. But to convince a Christian that, well, God does exist, but what you believe about God is not really true. Or doesn't make sense or who the people who are telling you the story can't be trusted for example you, yeah it's, it's a lot easier to do that than actually to take them away from god okay would you say a lot of it's to do with like them still like not christian but like culturally christian like with the whole richard dawkins thing mm. they're okay with that rather than you being a muslim yeah christian no because okay. it's it, islam is uh, a, a a dynamic uh belief yeah, a, a dynamic religion that changes everything around it, and so you know, a cultural Christian can just be celebrate Christmas and Easter and all stuff like that, um, and have Christmas carols and whatever, but at the same time, is not be impacted. But Islam can impact them, so yeah, and, and it's, it's telling them that you know, you know, remember to be a Christian, you just need to believe Jesus died for your sins. That's it, yeah, that's another thing I don't get. Like, if you as long as you believe in that, that's fine, but they don't be, like what. What inspires speak to, them to do good? Speak, speak to the Christians. That's it, I can't, in, in real life, I don't meet any. I'm the LIGO University here in the UK. I meet most atheists and like Muslim brothers. None of them really, not really Christians out there that are like other be, than beyond like culturally Christian. Mm. And the, the online ones are like, like lunatics. They just like, just want to say like yeah. everything bad about Islam. I can't have a, like, a genuine conversation. Yeah, yeah, no, but there are you kind of genuine conversations. It's just you've got to, you've got to uh, isolate the conversation. Okay. Right. Well, uh, thank you for having me on. Have a good night, inshallah. Have a good uh, Eid. In, inshallah, inshallah. Okay. Jazakallah khair, bro. You too. Eid mubarak. No Take care. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Salam. Mohammed. Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Turn up your YouTube. What? Turn off your YouTube or close oh, yeah. the tab. Actually, it's uh, one second. Let me plug in my. my it's, uh, I'm actually using my my laptop. My oh, okay, laptop. okay, okay. Go ahead. Go. Yeah. Well, how can I quickly, bro? Because I have to go soon. But go on. What, 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 how can I help you, bro? Oh yeah. One second. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So I have uh, um, two questions. Uh, first question is. Um, is about the um, you know the I think you've come across to it before and I think you will get annoyed by me saying that, but it's about the war when the Prophet Muhammad went to war and uh, you know the women, the concubine and stuff like that. I don't know. There is no concubine and uh, uh, that talks about like there is a concubine. But I just want to have this simple question because I dive too deep into it. When someone has a female, uh, how can I say prisoner of war? Mm. Okay, when he when someone has this female, it's permissible for him to have intercourse with her. Now, here's a question: Is it like can he force her? Like, I don't believe so. Okay, because this is a question that I was trying to find uh, in various websites and various people talking about this, but it's, they didn't really touch on it. 
So you can't really force her. It, it has to be uh, consensual. So basically, she agrees, you agree. Yeah, but, but like you say, the consensual type of thing back then was a different thing. It's not like, do you consent? It, it's basically, um, I think uh, Daniel Hakikachu did a brilliant thing about this, about like a worker working for an employee. Do you get me? Yeah. And it just it just went with the territory, you know, that the worker ha basically does because of the because of the nature of the work and such. So it's not like um, the way it is today. Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. it's not like, oh, do you consent if we have really? It's just a kind of <laughs> yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's an organic thing. I don't know. I'm not I'm not an not expert on these things, but I'm pretty sure it was more of an organic. It, it was a different situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the first time I heard about this is like actually from a christian side and it sounded so horrific but yeah, when i actually dive, yeah it doesn't surprise it, me i dive deep into it and i looked at the old testament what it says about like what um people do in war and compared to what prophet muhammad did peace and blessing be upon him did in war it's completely drastic completely drastic and it actually the in islamic narrative it makes more sense and i would even like i'm just keeping that in me like just in mm. my pocket Look, so look, at the end of the end of the, look at the end of the day women have needs just as much as men have needs and so is it permissible yeah is that is it i think the, the thing is it halal yes halas okay yeah your, okay. What's, your second, what's your second question what my second question is like i just want to ask your recommendation because you're very uh knowledgeable in the field of dawah so i have this friend and um he's young he's about like i met him when he was 16 now he's 17 and uh he was an atheist but after he met me like i was in his life he never really met a muslim but uh, the some of the practice of muslim like he would say, he would say that the muslims in his life are part-time muslims okay so he saw me and he found like he got influenced by me and he actually started believing in god he used to be agnostic Agn okay agnostic. okay agnostic. so little by little he started you know questioning about religion and he started questioning about islam and he was actually had a very drastic view about islam he had he even told me that in my face that you know i'm a christian like he used to be agnostic but he went with the flow where, where he's from he's from germany and he just said okay i'm i'm gonna be following the christian creed but since you are a muslim uh, and uh, after meeting you and after questioning you about islam and everything i have so much respect for islam and he said that and he started even like asking a lot of questions in that matter so i used to answer him and i didn't push it because i was scared i didn't want to push him so that he was just like go away from me you're just trying to force something upon me so now it come to a point where i started to inform him inform him about the masih al-dajjal and as soon as i told him that he suddenly just be became quiet and he was so attentive to me and he was listening to me like Okay, so he did not know anything about the uh, the Dajjal, and even in the in the Christianity, I believe that the um, the Antichrist is vaguely described. Bro, bro, get to your point, please. <laughs> Don't go. What, what's oh, the point? You said you had a question. I'm sorry. So my point is, can I be direct to him and just tell him, like, invite him to Islam, or should I just leave it at that and not? Um, invite like uh, just leave it leave him to devices okay, i have done my job invited to islam what, what kind of question is that so i'm basically trying to start telling him to just read like i would actually like being more straightforward to him because from like till this point i was just answering his questions okay just ask him does he believe god is the only one worthy of worship if god exists yeah okay he will say uh yes all right. Does he believe Muhammad peace and blessing upon him is a messenger of Allah? Okay. Does he? I don't. I don't know. Right. So I, that's, I would say. I, so I that, that's say would, that's yeah. that's where you uh, that's where you start. So okay. was he lying, crazy, deceived? You know that particular argumentation. So how yeah, would yeah. you know? So he made a claim fourteen hundred years ago. He's a messenger of God. He's either telling the truth about this claim. He's either lying about this claim. He's either crazy to believing in this claim, or he's been deceived into thinking this claim. When you okay. eliminate crazy, lying, and deceive, you're only left with the truth. That's it. That's it indeed. Sorry, I had to rush you, bro. People wanted to hear the no story, problem. but I haven't got time to hear the story. Forgive me. No, I've no, got, no problem. Really no got problem. to go to bed. I, I understand. <laughs> All right. Okay. But Mohammed, thanks. Go on. Yeah, just simple question. And how can I refute him because he believes that Jesus Christ is God? 
Sorry? So he believes that Jesus is God. So I will start refuting him in that aspect as well. So, sorry, I missed that. He was an atheist and he became a Christian? Yeah. Okay. Why does he believe Jesus Christ is God? That's the question. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll start with that question then. That was that was like watching a, a TV series and I went to like season three. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, maybe I should have heard the story. Maybe another time, inshallah. Come and tell us the story yeah. how you went from being an atheist to a Christian. All I, right, I, was, I was telling you the details. Yeah, I'm yeah, but I, I didn't have okay. time to hear all the details. No problem. Uh, but no that problem. seriously was going from season one to season three. <laughs> uh, that was madness. All right. Okay. Thank Take you. care. Bye bye. Salam. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't. Um, the story was going on for quite a while, and um, I have to go to bed. So, what did you say about Rose? Rose, uh, Ma. What was? You um, said something about time for Rose. What was this? What was that about? Okay, we just got. What was you saying, Emmy? But Rose wants to jump on. I oh, short to join, I think. Okay, is Rose still here then quickly? Oh, you've got her on Discord, mashallah. Uh, oh, come on then, quickly, quickly. quickly. What do you want to say? Go on then, Rose, quickly, quickly jump on. Uh, I've got five minutes for you. So, seven minutes. I'll give you till half past six. Then I've got to go. Because oh, I'm only going to get two hours sleep now. All right, the link is there, Rose. Jump on. But we're on 710 to go, inshallah. 704 to go, mashallah. Seven hundred and four pounds to go. That'll be a long story, is it, Rose? Oops. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Rose. Um, yes, my sister. Well, this is a couple of years back. A Christian said to me that um, in the Quran it talks about the adopted son of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so that. Sorry. Um, the Prophet وسلم, loved his wife and that's why he divorced um, his wife so that his wife can marry the Prophet وسلم. I didn't believe it but I have been searching for the answer for a long time which I have never had the answer to what do you say about that accusation what's the accusation the accusation is that the Prophet وسلم, loved his adopted son's wife and that's why he got his adopted son to divorce his wife so that he can marry her. Okay, yeah, so you don't... Okay. 
Very, very quickly. Okay, so we talked about Zainab, yeah. So, uh, so Zainab was a cousin yeah. of the Prophet, Sallallahu and she grew up with with, with him, yeah. Um, and Zaid, we used to was his adopted son, and Zaid was from um, coming from like a, a low class, and Zainab was from a high class, and it was Prophet who who got them married, yeah. And uh, because of the differentiation between the uh, the classes, this this caused friction within the marriage. And when mm-hmm. and then when Zaid came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, keep keep with her. So it was the opposite. He didn't tell her to divorce her. He said, stay with her. So this is the first thing. Second thing, it was after they were divorced. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married Zainab. It wasn't like, oh, we saw her and thought, oh, who is this woman? Ooh. Do you understand? This is how it's painted yeah. by the, the Christians. Uh, they're, they're a little bit stupid Christians. So they, 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 they act like, I mean, first of all, who's telling the story? How do they know what the Prophet was thinking and feeling and such? You know, because they say, oh, he was filled with lust. Yeah. It's just nonsense. Okay, so this is the first thing. Um, and like I say, Alhamdulillah, the Prophet Sallallahu had a habit of marrying divorcees and widows. Do you get me? Yeah. So yeah. Um, there's nothing um, dodgy about it. Alhamdulillah. Um, the thing is, when they asked me that question, I did look into it. And when I asked my dad, my dad's answer was not like your answer at all. It was the way the Christians said it. And my dad said the same thing, which got me questioning even more about that verse that came down for the Prophet ﷺ to marry um, Zainab. So thank you very much for the answer. And I know how to answer now when someone asks me that question. Stop answering questions. <laughs> and stop listening to Christians. Thank you very much. I will. First of all, be, become strong in your own deen. Um, be, before before getting involved with Christians and such. You're not in a position to do so. Because no, I've just had to friends. Um, I don't have friends anymore, um, which uh, I don't interact with anybody anymore because of some issues um, but before I had friends who were Christians and they always because I was in a foster home they always asked questions regarding those sorts of stuff which I was very young and I didn't know so that's what okay. I mean when I uh, ask yourself you this question much. ask yourself this question why are they asking you this why do they care because I mean if I they're Christians very religious. It, yeah, no, matter what. But, if they're Christians Say, well, yeah. according to your Bible, Abraham was married to his sister. What's your, what's your point? I don't understand. They're not asking you because they will want inquisitive. want to know. Yeah. Do you understand? They're just trying to make the Prophet Wasallam look bad. I understand that. Thank you very much, um, yeah, Brother Hamza. You okay. Take care, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is, I know, Mela. I know, Mela. This is, you know... It's, it's, it's Muslims. They go. They go watching uh, Sam Shimon's, David Woods, Avery's, uh, this kind of stuff, and they um, they get doubts. And I have I've advised Muslims stay away from these people, man. They'll just put doubts in your mind. Everything, everything, uh, aspersion that's cast against the Prophet is refuted. Yeah, everything. There's nothing not refuted. But the way they tell, oh yeah, he, he saw her. The garment slipped, and you know this is why Subhanallah. We uh, we have to ask ourselves. Who, who, who's telling this story? Did the Prophet say, one day I was going to visit Zainab's house and I saw such and such a thing and I was ooh, overcome with lust for her? No, no. So who's saying that the Prophet went to her house and this happened and that happened? Who's saying this story? Who's narrating this? This is why we don't accept all of uh, Tabri and Ibn Hisak for some, for, for some of the stuff that's in there. Like, what? Because that would be me. Who's telling the story here? Who's telling what the Prophet was thinking and feeling? And <sighs> Anyway. Right. I'm going to go. It's been a pleasure. Um, and I shall see you guys. When shall I see you guys? Ah! There's no more. There's no Sahur tomorrow, is there? It's just Eid. Um, I don't know when I'm going to see you. I might speak to um, Yemeni if he's ready to do his presentation about the Prophet Sallam being deceived by Satan on Friday. We might be able to throw that in there, inshallah. Um, yeah, how much are we finishing with? How much is outstanding? And let's do a final total. 
MashaAllah, 691 to go. Alhamdulillah. I'm pretty sure we'll do that. Okay. Have a great Eid, everyone. Eid Mubarak to everybody, inshallah. Um, and I shall see you on the other side whenever I'm live again. I don't know when that's going to be yet, but we shall see. Uh, if you follow Saudi Arabia, uh, Eid is tomorrow. If you follow in Morocco and other countries, I don't know when your Eid will be. But if you follow Saudi, inshallah, Eid will be tomorrow. So I bid you all Eid Mubarak. And thank you uh, for my mods, uh, Amberine and uh, maybe doing a sterling job as usual. Okay, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Here comes the lion. <laughs>